Hi everybody, so first of all massive thanks to Rob for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to present our research uh, here on this platform. Um, in this little uh, project from last year we've looked at the ability of the load velocity relationship to predict the 1RM in deadlift. So it has been proposed now several times that we potentially can take advantage of this almost perfect linear relationship here between load and velocity to predict the actual 1RM down there. So we were therefore actually pretty keen to uh, look at this on a scientific basis and we took the deadlift to, to look at the reliability and validity of uh, various 1RM prediction models. So to do so we, uh, we've recruited 11 resistant train athletes with an actual 1RM in deadlift of 175 kilograms ish which was exactly 2.0 of their relative body weight. Um, every participant came into our lab for three different occasions and uh, he performed on every occasion one, uh, one RM assessment. We then uh, computed with their data six uh, different models to predict their one RM based on uh, their submaximal load range included. So here we, for example, we have 20 to 60 percent, uh, we have 40 to 90, 20 to 90 percent of one RM. And to derive their individual 1RM predictions, we've uh, taken the inv individual velocity at 1RM of session 1, put it into the individualized linear regression equation for session 2 and 3, and received therefore um, their um, 1RM um, predictions for session 2 and 3. So looking firstly at the reliability results, we have done there on the x-axis always the prediction models, the 1RM and velocity at 1RM. Um, looking here on the standardized differences, we see that there are actually no differences. They're all trivial. They fall all in this gray area, with the exception of the velocity at 1RM, which had a small possible decrease from session 2 to session 3. Um, here on this plot here, we see the typical error, um, which ranged, um, depending on the model, between 5 to 8 kilograms. Um, the 1RM showed the, the best performance, so the lowest error. Um, and lastly, we look at the coefficient of variation here, which for all prediction models was below or close to 5%, uh, with again with the exception of the velocity at 1RM, which was here 16%, which showed considerable variation between uh, sessions and within individuals. So secondly, we looked at the validity of the prediction models from session 3. Um, firstly, we can look again on the standardized difference here and we see that every prediction model actually um, possibly overestimated to a small extent the actual 1RM. Um, the typical error was um, irrespective um, above 10 kilograms but below 15 kilograms. There was a tent of a bit of better accuracy here with those models including more submaximal load ranges. And finally, we have the coefficient of variation which was again close to 5 or below 5%. So based on this, the results look actually pretty good, but it's on a group base, and I think everybody's more interested in on, the, in, on the individual basis. So therefore, we've uh, done the whole analysis also on an individual basis. And we see here on this plot that on the y-axis, we have the uh, actual differences between the predicted and the actual 1RM, so in raw units, so in kilograms. Um, on the x-axis, the prediction models again, uh, everything up here is an overestimation and down there an underestimation of the 1RM. The gray boxes represent the day-to-day -day variation of the 1RM. So our thought process was that when a prediction falls into this gray box, we could consider it more or less as accurate. So looking, looking at the plot, we see that there were considerable overestimations for the majority of uh, participants irrespective of the model but there was a trend towards uh, as i mentioned earlier of higher accuracy um, at the models including more submaximal load ranges like 40 to 90 or 20 to 90 um, percent of 1rm what we can also see is that actually only three to four participants consistently were for uh, fall into this uh, gray box um, so we can say that um, four participants show sufficient levels of accuracy only out of 11. So to recap quickly um, we, we've shown that the prediction models were all highly reliable actually. Um, on a group base there was an overestimation of 5 to 10 kilograms but on an individual level there was considerable uh, variation and only four participants showed sufficient levels of accuracy. 
So with this data and with the practical applications, we would not recommend to use the actual 1RM and predicted 1RM interchangeably. We um, would also not encourage practitioners to use predictions of 1RM to adjust daily, uh, training load on a daily basis or to prescribe training load um, in general and uh, still therefore recommend to you occasionally perform traditional 1RMs on which load prescriptions are based upon. So I hope this uh, little video was informative and I would like to thank you for, for listening and uh, this paper can be downloaded on my research gate or just uh, pop me an email and uh, I'll send it over. So thank you very much.